everyone, Kate here, and oh boy has it been a week. Between struggling with ongoing hand pain, enduring a major heat wave, and fighting some rather frustrating technical issues with my videos, I've already had to scrap three nearly completed videos in the last week. To spare myself the stress of making yet another complicated video doomed to end in failure, I thought I would instead just test out two simple Victorian skin lotions. They are certainly not a lotion in the modern sense of the word, and the information on how they were actually intended to be used is rather scant. I'll talk a bit more about this later on, but first, here are the recipes. As the original book doesn't give any information about how these lotions were intended to be applied, I've opted to use a small bit of flannel with each lotion. This is a common application method during this time period. I've used only one lotion on each side of my face to help me compare the two. In addition to a lack of application details, very little information is given about what these products were supposed to be good for. Now, glycerin is a natural humectant and helps to hydrate the skin, whereas vinegar is both acidic and antibacterial. I suspect the first lotion would have been good for people dealing with skin issues such as acne, as the glycerin would help to soften the skin, whereas the vinegar would help to balance the skin's pH and kill any bacteria. The second lotion was probably purely intended just as a lightweight moisturizer. Mm -hmm. 
Now, before using the first vinegar-based lotion, I would recommend diluting it. I did used to use straight vinegar on my skin as a teenager, and it really helped my troubled acne skin. However, it's not recommended as many people will find vinegar too irritating to use without diluting it. My now 30-year-old skin no longer tolerates pure vinegar, and my face turned a bit red on the vinegar lotion side. The original formula book doesn't suggest diluting this recipe, but this book also recommends using mercury bichloride for your complexion, so I'm just going to go ahead and recommend changing the original recipe. Just a smidge. This lotion was also a bit on the sticky side. I think adding at least a third of a cup of rose water would greatly improve this product. If you do have sensitive skin, I would forgo the vinegar entirely and use the second recipe instead. I found this lotion to be both lightweight and hydrating and had no trace of stickiness. Unlike the first recipe, it won't have a long shelf life, but you could add a broad spectrum preservative or keep it in the fridge to prolong its lifespan. I quite like the tint in the first lotion, just for aesthetic reasons, but there's no reason you couldn't do the same to the second recipe as well, just by adding a smidge of pigment. Well, that's it for this week. Hopefully next week's video goes a little more smoothly. Until then, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.